Greetings, YouTube. Today I'll be talking about Bill Bryson's book, The Mother Tongue, English, and how it got that way. And the cover has pictures of people involved in language, like writers, there's a British person to represent both the language's origin and the accent, Shakespeare, and a, and a dictionary, which is all fine. I can't quite grasp why they covered it in little splotches of, of blue paint, though, because the blue paint is actually like on top of it, and it's shiny, like it's actually been splattered with blue paint figure that one out but you know I didn't design the cover um, I have a fascination with language um, I've read about the history of the Oxford English Dictionary I've read the book Prodigal, Son Prodigal Tongue which deals with how Eng English is being changed and used all over the world and this book is about how English came to be as a language from its origins um, and how it's changed over that time into like American English and British English and Australian English and one of the things I, I did enjoy about it and that the author is correct that there are naysayers people have been saying oh we're all gonna end up speaking different versions of English forever in like Australia and America and and and, 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 and Britain and, and no we're not British idioms and American idioms and Australian idioms are, are, are going everywhere thanks to the internet and through television um, particularly people are now having the ability to binge watch entire seasons of shows that are produced in other countries or at least said in other countries um, means that the language is just going faster and spreading farther than it ever did before and like it or not English is one of the dominant languages in the world today so the book is very interesting in its coverage of the origins of the language and I find found it fascinating to read from from cover to cover I do however question some of the author's decisions for example he comments about the fact that in the Boston area the word tonic is used for a carbonated sweetened beverage now I've li lived in New England for 47 years in New, specifically in New Hampshire, but I'm only like 45 minutes north of Austin, okay? And in all that time, I have never once heard the word tonic other than in reference to a gin and tonic. Now, my wife tells me that tonic is actually a word used in that area. Maybe I've just been oddly fortunate or lucky, what have you, to never have encountered the word, but I've never heard anybody say anything other than soda flat out. It's the word I use. When you say carbonated sweetened beverage, I'm thinking soda. That's the first word and the only word. I'm aware that there, there are pop and tonics are, are other terms for it, but I've never used them and I've never heard anybody in New England use them. I've just heard soda. Additionally, he makes a reference to the capital of my state. Now, the capital of my state is spelled C-O-N-C-O-R-D. I go there on a regular basis, okay? My wife has writing workshops there. I go to thrift shops up there and antique shops. It's a place I go to all the time. And he says that the word spoken, the word is pronounced both in New, New Hampshire and in Massachusetts, because there's another town called that in Massachusetts, though it's not their capital. Um, he says that the word is pronounced conk-erd, C-O-N-K hyphen U-R-D conk bird whereas people in New England actually pronounce it conquered c-o-n hyphen k-u-r-d that's how you pronounce the word here I don't know where he heard conk bird from I don't know what source he referenced for conk bird but I have never heard it pronounced conk bird I've only ever heard it pronounced conquered and I have only ever used the word conquered period so those two examples make me wonder about some of the references. Now, he's very good with the references. Whenever he mentions a book, he references a book and the page number in the text. So there's, no, there's, there's, there's no, nothing in the back to refer to. And the few times he uses footnotes, they're actually footnotes. They're actually at the bottom of the page. Bless Mr. Bryson's heart. Um, though he put them in an unbelievably small font, which I didn't much appreciate. So I question some of his sources why he thinks that we say tonic in Boston when I've never heard it, why he thinks we've called the capital of my state Concord when it's pronounced Concord. So that makes me think, how many other things in here might he have gotten wrong? 
that I don't know of because I'm not from those areas that specifically he's discussing Wales, UK in general, some states in the United States, places in Australia, you know, places where the English language is the most prevalent. So while I, 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 I recommend the book if you have a fascination with, with language, particularly the English language, I do throw in the caveat that I'm not 100% sure that all of his references are bona fide and incorrect. So take that for what you will. Um, but other than that, I enjoyed the book. It's a good read. I may pass it on to my wife. She might get a, uh, some enjoyment out of it. She's also fascinated by language and she is a writer. Um, otherwise, I, I may just do it. So, if you like, like, like the mother tongue, what can I get that in there? There we go. If you like the mother tongue, give the book a read.